Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. We're looking at a 2006 Porsche Boxster. This one here, the sports package version in left-hand drive, bought from auctions here in Japan for export over to Canada. This one has 103,000 original kilometers. This is the original auction inspection sheet there. Well, we'll take a look at the condition of the car before we export it over there. My overall impression of it is pretty good. The main uh, issue with it is uh, interior has a little bit more wear than you would like. Um, other than that, it's really not too bad. It's a pretty nice car. Now, normally I'd show you the engine, but this is a Boxster. You don't actually get to have a look at the engine. It's underneath this part here. Um, you can't even check the oil. And so normally when I do these reports, I'll check the oil. This one I couldn't inside the trunk. Actually, let me open the trunks for you so you can see. Inside the trunk is just a trunk and then a little area where you can check your coolant. And the coolant, you're supposed to be able to see the level through this, but it can be a little bit hard once that gets old and gets a little bit cloudier, which this one has. So couldn't really check the color of the coolant. Seems like it probably should be fine, but it's a good idea once the car lands to get the coolant checked. Now you get a trunk in the back, mini size, a little bit bigger than a Lotus Elise. But you also get a trunk in the front, which is quite a bit bigger. So if you actually do need to carry stuff inside the car, it's probably overall more space than a Miata has. Where are we going? There we are. Yeah, I'd say for sure more space than a Miata. Okay, more space than an MRS as well. Okay, quick look at the car. Let's go over the auction inspection sheet first. There's Grant in the background, throwing some wheels onto this car. So, actually I'll do this outside of the light because it's very high contrast. So, 2006 Porsche Boxer Sports Package. This is an auction grade four with an interior B. I'd say maybe interior C is uh, justified for this. A little bit windy today. Um, maybe B, maybe C. 103, 153 kilometers on it, six-speed manual transmission. This is the 2.7 liter Boxer 4. You can also get it in a 3.2 for this generation. And then later on, you can get it as a 2.9 and 3.6 when they upped the engine size. I will say the 2.7, I'm not sure of the exact power of that, but it should be somewhere in the range of about 200 or so. It's fun to have a less powerful car if you intend to enjoy the handling of the car. High-powered cars tend to make the car a little bit less fun to drive when you're trying to be good at handling until you become a pro driver, I suspect. Um, anyway, that's my experience with it. Power steering, power windows, leather, airbag, uh, alloy wheels, spare key, comes with history papers and owner's manual, uh, and uh, various other paperwork. The sales points here, that's blowing around too much. 18-inch wheels, they are the stock wheels, as you can see. It also says PASM, which is probably an acronym for something I don't know. Grant, do you know what PASM acronym is? Not a clue. That's probably something for traction control or something stupid like that. Uh, seat heaters, there's only two seats in this, so seat heaters on both. Sports, uh, sports tailpipe. Now, I looked at the exhaust. It looks aftermarket, but at the same time, not aftermarket. I'll show you in a sec here. Half leather seats, reverse camera, xenon headlights, yellow calipers on the brakes. That might be part of the sports package, and it does look quite nice on a black car like this. Okay, and toll collection box for Japanese highways. Now, the report here says exterior has small scratches, small dents. Interior is dirty and has wear. The windshield has a rock chip, and I had special instructions to get pictures of the rock chip, which I'll show you as well. Uh, front underside scratched and dented. Hood damper doesn't work, and trunk damper doesn't work. You also have A on the front bumper, quite a few of them. AU over here, A, W, and AU. The W is a repaint. Uh, repainted door is actually not bad at all. I didn't even notice that it was repainted, so that's a good sign. And uh, I actually didn't have a look at the AU here, personally, so let's have a look at that. Okay, well, it's actually a little bit bigger than I would have thought. Here it is, but the good news about this damage is that 
people see the car from this angle. So you're not gonna be seeing that. You'll know that it's there, but honestly, nobody else will. Okay, that's all for uh, that auction sheet. Let's go for the walk around the car. Okay. So, Porsche Boxster. I haven't had a chance to drive one like I'd like to drive one. Of course, I've driven one around the block. Feels good. I think these engines sound good, and I think I would really like it to drive one. So it's a shame I haven't had a chance to drive it more than, I don't know, you know, I've, I've driven probably in my whole life about 10 kilometers in a Porsche Boxster. Not enough to really get a good grasp of what it's like, but seems to have a decent chassis, seems to have a fairly peppy engine. It's not a 911, but it's cheaper than a 911, so there is that. And I also feel like a 911 is kind of wasted on a lot of the people that buy them. I'm not calling anyone out, but if you want a 911 for the image, you're getting it all wrong. The 911 is such a peach of a car when it comes to driving it, and a Boxster, theoretically, should be better than that because it has an engine in the correct location. Now, Porsche intentionally keeps their 911 as the flagship, as they should, but I think a lot of people kind of uh, undervalue the Boxster. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the details here. We have a little bit of fade on the Porsche logo. Headlights have gone cloudy. Now this one's going to Canada where you're supposed to change the headlights anyway. So it's not really a big problem. These headlights just point toward, um, like, so steering, steering wheel on this one is on that side of the road, which matches Canada, so that's great. But right now the headlights point this way, like they're flat here and then up here and then like down here, right? And that's the opposite of what you would need for Canada. So you're supposed to change the headlights. Some headlights can be adjusted. I don't know if these ones can. Check on the internet, people there are smarter than I am. So do check that out. The fog lights also have the same issue. And the front area, um, exclusive to the front bumper, seems to have about 10 to 15, maybe a little bit more rock chips. Here's three of them all lined up together. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's a, another one. Okay, the hood's looking all good. The windshield rock chip. Let's have a look at that. Uh, buyer was thinking maybe we can get the windshield changed here in Japan. It's possible to do that. Yes, we can. But for rock chip like this, I would say probably not necessary. Um, in Canada, you can get something like that filled if you really don't want to see it. Um, then there are a few smaller ones as well. For example, here. Not sure how well that can be seen but I have a feeling like the previous owner was maybe a little bit too close to the traffic in front of him on the highway. That's my take. Okay, coming down this side, the fender actually has a few small scratches. One, two, three, maybe four there. They're all very small. You're probably gonna be able to polish those ones out. What you won't be able to polish out is this scratch here by the door handle, arguably the worst place to get a scratch on your car because everybody looked right there when they opened the car door. I mean, only you are going to be opening the car door, but you might also be sad seeing that every time. So maybe in need of a repair. You also have some uh, cracking of the plastic guard here. And I didn't mention it in the other video, the side panel check, because I didn't notice it at the time, but there's a dent right here. There's also a dent up here that's rather small. I did take a picture of this, but not part of the video. Okay, and then this part here, it just cracks from heat expansion or thermal expansion and contraction, and then they have to be replaced every once in a while. You can just peel this off and a body shop can put a new part on. Purpose of it is because the front tire is gonna kick up some rocks, and if you don't have this, you're gonna get a big area of rock chips right in that area. They've known that for 50 years on cars and have been putting those rock chip things on accordingly. Back bumper's looking pretty good. This is an automatic spoiler, so I believe I believe it's automatic. There's a button to raise it if you want, but it's kind of a derpy looking spoiler. It basically just struts out like that, another 10 centimeters up, and doesn't even really look like a spoiler, but it is functional, and it's going to help you at speed, mostly with the top in the up position, I would think. I, and I think that it comes up at speed as well, like over a certain uh, speed, then it'll come up. You have a crack in the lens there, wasn't noticed by the auction inspector and should have been. And some fade on the Boxster logo. 
Okay, I'm not sure what M's company is, but it sounds good company, and then you can call them if you want. The phone number's on there. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if uh, all the viewers called, Hey, can I talk to M? I want some company. Okay, this side is a lot cleaner than the other side. It doesn't have, uh, well, other than that one that's down there on the sill, it doesn't have any scratches or dents that needed to be talked about. So it's looking pretty good. Good, good, good. Loving those yellow calipers, and that's on the front and the back. You've got a four-piston caliper on the front and a four-piston caliper on the back. Unless that's the sliding caliper. No, that's monoblock. Four-piston, just smaller pistons. Hmm. Oh, and uh, here's something. The front and rear tires are both no-name tires, which isn't going to cut it on a car that performs as nicely as this one does. I highly recommend getting those upgraded and then just using these ones for burnouts. They're different <laughs> or whatever you want. You don't have to do burnouts. Um, they're a different size front and rear, so you can't just swap them uh, with size. A 235-40 R18 and a 265-40 R18. Going into the car now, here's where we're going to see the defects on the car. And I gotta show you a few things. Um, the door cards, got quite a few little chips in the paint along here. This is a, something you can open. You can store tiny things inside there. It's also generally a little bit dirty and needs to be clean. This handle is loose. You see how it's not lined up properly? Okay. You also have the paint chipping around here and around here. You get a functional roll bar inside the car, so that's nice. Let's have a look now at the interior. It's a beige interior with leather seats. I think it's leather and Alcantara. I don't think it's actual suede in the seats. So have a look there. The seats are in decent condition, but both the driver and passenger seat are pilling. And while I've seen that before on these Boxsters, I don't think I've seen it enough to think that it's a super common problem. I think it does happen, but I think it's, it has to do with what kind of a driver it is that's driving it, potentially, because I've seen more that don't have that, even higher mileage ones. Okay, going in here, this screen does a weird little flash dance. That was a weird word to say, but it needs to be replaced and it looks like it doesn't display anything and that's where your warning signals will be. The warning lamp I think is somewhere else but it'll say like your seatbelt is not attached or it's low fuel or um, low tire pressure or whatever these warnings are. We'll, we'll read that out in Japanese and I believe you can set it to different languages just within the settings of the car. Okay, so this section of it, um, aftermarket Navi unit, the AC works. Six speed manual, very nice. Okay, so let's talk details here. The glue or the, the paint has started to wear off on both of these. It's super common on the Japanese imports. Spoiler up and down button, suspension control button, and the PSM off. So I guess that is traction control. Heated seats have two different settings. You have a toll collection box for Japanese highways. And uh, floor carpets and pedals are looking good. Quite a bit of dirtiness on the shift knob. It's kind of weird, right? How do you get so dirty on this section of the shift knob? People shift like this. Not like this. Or maybe that's, I don't know, weird, right? A little bit of wear on this, and the button on the tip is missing. I've never seen that before on a car intention, like non-intentional. Some people take them off in order to put like the, the drift style spin turn knob. Hasn't been smoked in, no bad smell of cigarettes in here, and a little bit of wear on the edge here. Passenger seat also is oddly pilled. I wonder if passenger and driver were of the hefty type, which would be very rare in Japan. This, and I'm only going to do this once, so watch closely, because this is broken. This is where your cup holders are. And it's supposed to be push in, and click in, and it stays in. That one doesn't do that anymore. You can close it by pushing it like this, and then pushing this up, and just kind of wiggling it until it gets in there properly. 
and then making sure it's clicked in. It's not the easiest thing to do, and you can actually see it's a little bit misaligned after doing that. Okay, there's the rock. Now, the rock chip. Focus on my hand. Do this for me, camera. Thank you. There's the rock chip. Okay, headliner's looking good. I didn't undo the top as I don't do that in these reviews, so have not had a chance to check that. I will say the top is generally pretty good condition, but there are a few marks of a little bit of wear here. So you're probably gonna wanna spray it with some sort of like a soft top specific spray that is meant to protect the flexibility of the top so that it doesn't wear out more there. Because as it hinges in, these are where it kind of buckles, where the fabric buckles and over time that's going to be a problem. It uses a hard glass back window, which is nice. The plastic ones are sucky on convertible cars. Okay, and I think that that's pretty much it for this Boxster. So as usual, if you have any questions, whether you're the owner of the car or a viewer on YouTube, please go ahead and email us your questions. There's a link to our email address in the description. Thanks so much for watching everyone and have a nice day.